you would all rise for this morning's scripture reading, our lesson this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 13. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or another you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy and yet to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free. And we were all given the same one spirit to drink. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of his word. You may be seated. Yes. And so I, I, I'd say sorry, but not sorry, because you walked in and you smelled something, didn't you? It's like, hey, we're at the movies. All right, I'm sorry. And for all of you who are worshiping at home, I should have told you to just grab a bag of microwave popcorn and throw it in your microwave. And uh, that way you'll get the same smell that we have here. <laughs> should have started with that. I apologize. Well, welcome to our final week of this fun and interesting worship series at Journey of Hope here called At the Movies. It's time that we dive deeper into some storylines from Hollywood. Throughout my ministry, as I've said before, that uh, I've always looked for ways to see the sacred in the secular. I wanted to see how God is sharing the gospel message in ways that we would never expect. And the film industry was just one of those places where, where you can always see, almost always see messages of hope grace, and love. Have you thought about your favorite movies yet? As we keep going through this series, have you wondered about some of the sacred messages found within those movies? Did you go back and watch your favorite one again, looking for deeper meanings? See, because movies take us on this journey, telling us a story and helping us to believe in the characters. As I said, whether we like them or not. I did just go see Elvis, and uh, as Greg Cherry had shared, he says, you know, you, you get to the point where somebody plays a character so well that you walk out of there hating Tom Hanks because he played Colonel Tom Parker. And I agree with you, Greg. <laughs> he didn't like the character, but that meant he did a really good job. 
Well, so far we've talked about Guardians of the Galaxy with a theme of sacrificial love that's found throughout that. And then we talked about the Goonies, that wonderful 1980s classic about the quest for lost treasure, escaping and overcoming evil, encouraging each other, acceptance, thinking outside of boxes, and even witnessing. I wonder if you saw all of those themes again, if you went back and watched it. Well, this week we take a journey to an animated movie. Now, I must say that it was interesting to find out that that this was actually shown on Friday at Movies in the Park. Did anybody go out and watch it in the Movies in the Park? (laughs) What's that? Oh, canceled it for rain. Uh. Well, I guess then nobody saw it there. But I did get messages from some of you who watched it in preparation for today that decided to go out and get it and, and, and take, a, take a watch of that and see what it was all about. And so let us kind of dive into this today. But before we get started, I just want to remind you once again that in your bulletins you've got your compass guides. It has your questions for the week as well as scripture passages. also has little places that you can take notes. So that when the Spirit speaks to you this morning... Because the Spirit will, you can jot those notes down. So will you pray with me? Gracious and almighty God, we come striving to hear your word. And so God, I ask that the words that I speak would no longer be my own, but that they would be your words, that we would truly understand the message that you have for us today. All this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, quick overview of the movie. Maybe I'll ask, has has everybody seen the movie? Okay, so who has seen uh, Encanto? All right, so so some of you are going to know what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you a quick overview of this movie, uh, and then you'll probably want to go back and watch it. So if you haven't seen it, you're probably going to, oh, I need to go see this. Uh, Maribel, Maribel, is the main character, and she is part of this this large family from Colombia. They are the Madrigals. And every member of the family, at some point in their life, usually at a pretty young age, will receive a special gift, a magical gift. The problem comes when Maribel does not receive a gift at her ceremony. The rest of the movie, you see, is based around her not only trying to figure out why she didn't receive one, and also why the magic at the Maribel house, or at Uh, the Madrigal house, is starting to fade away. As in most good movies, all is saved, sorry for the spoiler, uh, and they live happily ever after. That's, like I said, most movies. But how they get there is pretty interesting. So let me set this up with you uh, with uh, with a clip from early on in the movie as Maribel is trying to explain to a group of of neighborhood kids all about her family. And so here is that clip, I believe. What are you doing? Uh, they were just asking about the family. She and... was about to tell us about her super awesome gift! Oh, Mirabel didn't get one. <laughs> you didn't get a gift? Um... Mirabel! Delivery! I gave you the special since you're the only Madrigal kid with no gift. I call it the not special special, since uh, you have no gift. Thanks. Oh, and tell Antonio good luck. Last gift ceremony was a bummer. Last one being yours, that that did not work. Mm -hmm. If I was you, I'll be really sad. Well, my little friend, I am not. Because the truth is, gift or no gift, I am just as special as the rest of my family. Who wants more cake? Alright guys, where do I drop the wagon? Maybe your gift is being in denial. <laughs> How many of you have the gift of denial? <laughs> I always love that line. Maybe your gift is a gift of denial. Well, Maribel, you see, has uh, other family members with gifts, like Louisa. Louisa has the gift of strength. She was the one that was lifting up all the donkeys in that last scene. Uh, Dolores has the gift of hearing as she can hear the softest of whispers. Peppa has the gift of controlling the weather, although sometimes it's kind of strange how it controls her at times. Uh, Camillo can change into anything or anyone he wants to. 
And Isabella has the horrible gift of being effortlessly perfect. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Maribel's mom has the gift of healing people with her food. I think we know a few people like that. Somebody makes really good cookies. Right, Betty? (laughs) And little Antonio receives his gift in a ceremony during the movie in which he can communicate with animals. But there's also someone who has the gift of prophecy. But we don't talk about him, right? Who don't we talk about? Bruno, yes, we don't talk about Bruno. Uh, But actually, just in a little bit, we're actually going to talk about Bruno uh, because I think there's a message found within his character. But first, we have to talk about the obvious of them, which is this, uh, which this movie presents. I mean, this movie is about individual gifts, even magical gifts. Everyone seems to have them, and they even have special ceremonies on those days that people receive their gift. They throw a big party. They celebrate the day they receive their special gift. I mean, recently, we celebrated a special Sunday in the liturgical year called Pentecost, in which, which is when we remember the giving of the Spirit to all people. With this special gift of the Spirit also comes spiritual gifts. It certainly seems like a good time to celebrate, doesn't it? Well, even though... Even though Maribel doesn't believe she got a gift, she still exhibited a special gift to everyone that she met. You see, she was full of compassion. She was full of empathy. She was always looking out for someone else and expressing feelings for those who were not doing so well. This truly is a gift. I wonder if you know someone who has that gift in your life. In fact, if you know someone who has that gift in your life, maybe you can reach out to them. Or maybe you reach out in in an interesting way. Maybe you type their name in the chat. So if you're here worshiping from home or or if you're here in the sanctuary and you're you're on your phones, which I am perfectly fine with, uh, you can message that person's name, that person that you know of that has that gift of always reaching out to others, of showing empathy and care. I mean, you know somebody who is always thinking of others, somebody who would drop anything to help someone else. Well, in our passage from 1 Corinthians today, we hear about some of the special, the spiritual gifts that are offered through the Holy Spirit. These are named in a letter written to the church. In Corinth. Now, if you, if you don't know about this church that, that Paul helped kind of get started, it won't take long uh, with reading the letter from Paul to realize that things weren't going exactly well in the church of Corinth. Sure, we have the, uh, the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, which, which has been kind of named the love chapter. It's used many times at wedding ceremonies. But even that message takes on a new meaning when you realize that Paul was not particularly happy with this church family. Paul writes about divisions in the church where some people were following Apollos and some were following Paul while others were following Jesus. There were some who were questioning authority in the church, some bringing lawsuits against fellow members. And some obvious problems when it came to immorality in relationships. They are having issues with the sacrament of Holy Communion. Idols, idolatry, clothing, and so many other issues. I guess when you think about it, not much has changed over 2,000 years. We still have divisions in church today. But then Paul begins speaking about spiritual gifts and the differences in them. But his focus is not necessarily on the differences, but how they are all needed to make up the body of Christ. Each and every gift is needed to make up 
this body of Christ. No one gift is more important than another. Not one person is more important than another. In the Madrigal family, there are many gifts, but they are all needed in the family. And Paul reminds us there are, that there are many parts to the body, but every part of the body is needed. We all have special gifts. And each one is needed at Journey of Hope. We can't accomplish all that of God's plan for us unless we are all using the gifts that God has given to us. I mean, last week we, we heard about one of, sorry Mary, we heard about one of Mary Becker's gifts, uh, that of teaching. And we also heard how she is planning on using that gift in the fall as she leads a disciple Bible study group. She had also used this gift for years and years, teaching young ones in our Sunday school. What are your gifts? Do you know? Do you know what your spiritual gift is? And I shouldn't say gift because more than likely you have more than one spiritual gift. So do you know what your gifts are? And, do you, and if you do, how can you use them to build the kingdom of God? And so if you're wondering what your gift is, if you're not really sure, I know last year we had this, this spiritual gifts assessment, which was pretty long. It was on paper, and so it, some of you did them. Some of you remember what your gifts were. But we're going to do this again because we're getting close to uh, that stewardship month where we ask for, for pledges, and we also do this thing called the time and talent sheets, which I do pull from, especially as we look to, uh, to people in their spiritual gifts and, and where they are looking to, uh, to serve in ministry. We're going to do those again. Uh, we're also going to have another spiritual gifts assessment. I sent that out to my, uh, my group that's in the Five Cups of Coffee group. Uh, it is actually one that's online, uh, so it takes a little bit less time to do, and it'll give you your results right away. You don't have to do all the adding, and break out your little abacus and add things up or get your little adding machine going. Uh, it'll just figure it out for you. So you get it all taken care of. So we're going to do that. It's actually offered through the United Methodist website. Uh, so you'll have a link for that. But that way it'll help you to discern your spiritual gifts. Maybe I'll link that in our Facebook room, our Facebook page as well as send that out in our weekly update so that you have it earlier. Well, once completed, I encourage you to find out ways to utilize that gift in the life of Journey of Hope and in your community. This is the way we become the body of Christ with everyone participating. Everyone participating. You are all needed in the body of Christ. Every one of you. You all have that special gift that you can do. All right. We need to talk about Bruno. We really do. I know there's this whole song in the movie about why we don't talk about Bruno, but I think it's very, a very important message for us uh, actually found within this character. If, we're, if you remember, I told you that Bruno's gift is one of prophecy. Actually, they call it looking into the future. But isn't that what prophecy is all about? Well, they don't talk about him because he had been banished from the family. No one wanted to see or hear from him anymore. Why? Well, if you think about it, many of the prophets in the Bible were not very well liked either. They seemed to bring a lot of messages from God about destruction and famines, wars and death. Most of the time, this was because the people of God were not following God's plan or laws. There was even one person who wanted to get rid of all the prophets. Elijah ran from this person and escaped up into the mountain to have a conversation with God about it. So Bruno has been banished. And the reason was because he was asked to give a vision right after Maribel found out she wasn't receiving a gift. They wanted to find out why. To see if there was a, a reason for all of this. 
Well, as the vision came into focus, it was about the magic being in trouble at the Madrigal family. But there was another problem. When he saw what was happening, he stopped the vision. He just knew what people would think of him and of the vision. And so he stopped it. He never really watched fully to the end or paid close enough attention to it. The vision didn't seem like it was something that the family wanted. They never fully watched it. However, it was a vision into the future. It was a prophecy, which meant that it was going to come true, and now it seemed like it was actually happening. But at the time he had the vision, the family decided that it would be best not to talk about it. In fact, not even talking about the person who gave the message. Hence, we don't talk about Bruno. Kind of sounds like denial, doesn't it? Well, Elijah was running away from Jezebel because the king was killing so many of the prophets, probably because the message was one that he didn't want to hear. Therefore, Elijah was having some problems with speaking God's prophecies. But God told him to go and to continue to do it and to anoint a new king, the new king in Syria. The words and actions of Jezebel affected Elijah and his confidence to continue to do his work until he had some time with God. And then things turned around. The arguments around Bruno's vision affected him as well because while he could have just continued watching the vision to see how it would end, he didn't want to either. He rewatched the vision over and over again, but only to the same spot. He couldn't determine what it all meant. But he knew that when the family found out about it, they wouldn't be happy. Have you ever been negative with someone else's dreams? Someone else's visions? Have you ever told someone that what they hoped for was simply out of reach? Or too far-fetched to possibly come true? Maybe, Maybe you didn't say anything, but the way you acted told them that they should forget about it and just move on. Maybe you just did the old... uh, Roll your eyes at it. Or maybe you walked away. Didn't give them any encouragement. How does that help them? How does that fall in line with leading a Christian life? I mean, sure, we, could speak the, we should speak the truth in love, especially as it pertains to something that might hurt someone. But what about encouraging everyone to follow where God is leading them? Who are we to stand in the way or to be an obstacle to a vision that God has given to someone? We have three dreams or visions which have come from what all of you have said through the CAT survey. These visions, I believe, have come from the hand of God to all of us. God is giving us a vision of where Journey of Hope is going and what we need to focus on in order to get there. Do you remember what they are? One, reach out to young families, youth, and new members. Two, incorporate guests and members uh, and prospective members into the life of the church into this body. And three, to help those who have been broken by life circumstances. Now, as I said, goal number two, if you are interested in helping, Maureen and Terry are working with that one, and so see them after worship or comment your name. Just tell Larry or, or tell uh, Maureen and, uh, and Terry that you want to help them uh, on that goal. And that is that one of incorporating guests, prospective members, and members into the life of the church. How do we get connected together? These are the visions that we're working toward. And I hope that none of us will ever feel like Bruno, like our hopes and dreams could get stomped on by traditional thinking or by trying to put God in a box, 
limiting the power that God is offering to all of us. Let's all use our spiritual gifts in this body of Christ. Let us truly bind ourselves together, working toward the mission. And what is the mission? It's to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. How do we do that? We do that by offering a space of belonging, a space of acceptance that that we can all join together, get connected, and be this family. Dysfunctional as it may be, we can still be this family coming together. Then we offer this, this opportunity to transform our lives, to change our lives. And as we change our lives, we decide that there is more, that we need to take that message and go out into our community and into our world and share that with everyone that we see, to be excited about it and share that. This is the mission and the vision of Journey of Hope. And we do that through all of this, also through those three new goals that we have that we will be focusing on. So I hope that you are all on board and that we are moving in that way and that we never feel like Bruno, that we have to stay tucked away behind the walls, hiding away because no one wants to hear that vision or that dream. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, I thank you for for a vision. Thank you for a a message that, that we can use the gifts that you have given to us to further the vision that you also has have given. God, we are your people. We long to to follow your Son Jesus Christ. We long to love you and to love our neighbors. And so, God, we ask you for the encouragement to do that through our mission, through our vision, through these three goals of reaching out to young families, of incorporating them as well as everyone else here into the life of the church, and to reach out with compassion and to help those who are broken by life's circumstances. God, because we know that, that this vision, that these goals have come from you. And so help us to achieve them. God, thank you for this time and thank you for this space, this sacred and holy space. In Jesus' name, amen.